Hey there folks, Jason from Blue Label Bastards Wargaming again. And this is going to be the first in a series for my vlog talking about my entree into Warlord Games Bolt Action World War II Wargame. And I already did a video kind of on a starting place for another Warlord Games uh, offering Hail Caesar, which is more of an ancient Warhammer fantasy style. This one is much more 40k in that it's small units, it's squad or company level, it's not Flames of War style where you won't, I mean, you can have a tank company, but it's, it's specialized. So it's 28 millimeter versus 15 millimeter. So this is kind of my complement to 40K. I did play 40K, kind of stepped away from it for kind of a host of reasons I talk about in two videos back if you want to go back and watch that. So this is going to be my entree. When I was trying to think through how I wanted to track my progress, I had a tough time. Do I start with going through the rule book and talking about the rules? Do I pick an infantry unit to kind of unbox and evaluate? Or the unit that really kind of got me into the game to begin with, the, the model? And so after some toing and froing, uh, I decided not to go with the rules because I'm still learning them and I don't want to pass on bad information. So I figured I'd just start when I walked into my uh, local game store and saw a model, and this is kind of what got me excited about it. And, and really, it, isn't that what wargaming is about, is finding something that gets you excited to make you want to put things together and play with it. You know, uh, boys or girls with toys kind of thing. So today we're going to talk about an unboxing, and I'm going to walk you through kind of the process of um, assembling and painting and weathering a uh, a tiger tank. I'm going to go with a German force. And so this is what I picked up from the FLGS. You can see it runs for $40. And uh, so tiger tanks are my favorite World War II vehicle. As an aside, I'm going to do a separate video talking about guilt when it comes to picking factions in more recent war games, particularly World War II. I feel like there's some stigma associated with picking the Germans. Maybe with the Japanese, although probably less so. And that's a separate aside, but I decided to go with the Germans just because I think they have the coolest the coolest vehicles. And I'm going to adjust this lamp here a little bit so we don't get quite so... There we go. A little bit less, less clear. So this is what I went with. So you know, uh, Tiger tanks are not a particularly competitive choice in a regular game of, of bolt action, but I've never been one to kind of go with the best thing. I think it's cool. It's a good place to start uh, for me because these can get me excited about it, and so that's what I'm going to do. So uh, I have opened this already, but um, so you know, it comes to it's one tank. Um, Vitman is a World War II tank ace. I'm not going to model it that way. I'm just going to use it for the Tiger, uh, and this runs forty dollars from my FLG. As you may be able to find it cheaper someplace else. So let's take a look at what you get. Like I said, I have already looked at this. Um, here's just some instructions. It's a resin model, so they just want you to, uh, to wash it before you paint it or else you're going to lose your paint, potentially. Got it. And that's kind of it. And then you've got the model itself. Now I have kind of pruned some of this already because most people when they get home want to take a look at the stuff they got. So you've got the main chassis here and you've got the the tracks and uh one of the things i didn't quite like about this model was when you put this together the um the side skirts and the tracks are one piece i would have preferred to have the tracks completely separate because you, you paint weather those differently than you would the uh the tracks themselves, but to kind of get uh, the right looking paint job, you have to assemble it fully. I mean, that's a minor gripe. Then you've got the turret. Uh, very nice casting, couple bubbles, nothing major. I've cleaned up some things. I think a lot of it's gonna be covered with the paint. So that looks good. So these are most of the resin pieces. And you can kind of see what it looks like there. And just for scale purposes, I'm gonna walk over here and I'm gonna grab a Warhammer Fantasy model I have out. And so that's the size of a Dragon Ogre for my uh, 
uh, Warhammer Fantasy Warriors of Chaos Army. So you can kind of see the scale. Obviously, it's a bit smaller. The war game is 28 millimeters, but the vehicles are 1 in 56. Yeah, so it's not uh, the your, your troopers are going to look bigger than the tanks would in real life. And then the last thing you get is a bag of metal parts. And just go ahead and we'll put the tank aside here for a second. And so you get the gun barrel. Oh, let's not have this problem again, but I guess we're going to. Anyways, you get the gun barrel, which isn't going to help me. I'll take to take separate pictures or, or whatever. There we go. Gun barrel. I'm not sure if I'm going to drill the end out or just kind of leave it like that. I'm going to pretty heavily weather this tank. Uh, but we'll see. It was a little crooked, and sometimes getting these things perfectly straight is a bit of a hassle, but I've got those. It does come with two models for uh, Vitman, one where he sits on his vehicle, and then one where he's in the uh, driver's cupola on top of the turrets. I'm probably not going to use these because it really does goof up the scale. I mean, if you plunk this guy, let's bring this back. If you plunk this guy in there, suddenly he's huge in comparison. I mean, Tigers for that size would have been like this big. They were gigantic tanks. So it just looks a little weird for me. So I'm, I'm probably not going to use them. And then you get the driver's hatch. You can have this open or closed. And you get some extra track sections. Oops, I suppose I should actually put this on the video. So you get the door, some extra track sections that go around the vehicle. And it's either a, a tow bar or a crash bar. Uh, the machine gun for the maybe a machine gun that goes in the front up there and uh, a couple other uh, bits and bobs I guess you would say and so that's that's really it uh, in terms of the quality of the casting it's all pretty good uh, there's a lot of flash there we go a lot of flash on the bottom here that you had to clean up it's not a perfect casting I don't I'm trying to think because it's so solid, it's hard to compare it to somebody like Forge World, where we're more, much more familiar with. I would say it's on par. Like a lot of the stuff on the top, like you've got tow cables in here, and some of them are a little loose. But on the whole, I think this is a great casting. Uh, I haven't looked at a lot of other tanks out there for use with uh, bolt action, but this one seems like a very good tank. You don't have to buy a lot of them, so the $40, which seems a little high at first, I don't think will be that bad. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to wash the parts and assemble the tank. I'm going to talk about paint scheme. So I will be right back. All right, folks, and we're back. And so uh, just took me a couple minutes. And uh, here is the assembled final product. And I have to say it came together really well. Let me hold up the, uh, the picture on the box. Uh, we'll do that in the interim. There we go. So, um, yeah, everything went together just fine. No major problems. There's a couple bubbles here and there. But on the whole, I think it, it, it ended up looking pretty darn snazzy. Now, let me see if I can get this to... Yeah. So you can see the details on the top of the tank. You've got tow cables on either side. Um, I put the extra track links on this side. For whatever reason, if you can see these notches right here on the top of the turret, that's where you're supposed to hang the tracks. Ooh, come on, I'll focus. Then you're putting it on this side, so I might, I might have taken one of those off. It does overload that side a little bit. But um, yeah, details really good. Uh, there's an odd finish on this that uh, the Germans put on. If it looks ridged, it's supposed to be uh, later on in the war. There's an escape hatch. And, uh, yeah, so the, I think the gun barrel came out pretty straight. It was a little crooked. There we go. So, yeah, on the whole, uh, really pleased with how this tank turned out. And so what we're going to talk about now is what I'm going to do to paint it. And if you are all familiar with World War II, German armor, uh, uh, there's two general paint schemes that you'll see it's either called dunkelgrau or dunkelgelb uh dark gray or dark uh yellow uh beginning of the war is they had like a dark gray color and later in the war they switched to a, a a dark yellow and then they put camouflage on top of it depends on the vehicle now for this one i am 
because I haven't done a lot of historic painting before, and a lot of it kind of requires an airbrush, I'm going to go kind of simple with this one and just do a Dunkel Gelb with some highlights. And I'm still up in the air if uh, I'm going to be going to um, uh, do the winter camouflage. They essentially just kind of whitewashed vehicles. And so you can end up getting something that looks like this. This is with a gray underneath the Dunkel Grau. Uh, I think it looks cool. So the tanks are going to be set up for a... Uh, um, Eastern Front combat. Uh, so obviously the winter there is going to be a little bit worse than other places. But what I want to... I, I'm just not sure if I want to base my whole army on a winter theme. Because that means it looked weird if the tanks were painted for winter and the troops were just normal dudes running around. So I'm not quite sure... Uh, but what I am going to talk about before I start the next steps is just kind of introduce some of the the tools that I use or the uh, the reference aids that I picked up, uh, and it's kind of nice to have these because uh, you don't have it for like Warhammer 40k. You can kind of do whatever you want. So uh, Osprey Publishing, I'm sure you guys have seen these books before. Uh, they're kind of all over the place. Most modeling stores. Um, uh, they're great references. I'm gonna adjust my lamp again. Great references, I think, for new people like me to take a look at some paint schemes, read a little bit more about the vehicles. I'm not gonna be super anal about this, but I think the paint scheme that I'm gonna try to go for is like this one. So it is winter time and there's snow there, but you can see it's the the dark yellow paint. I didn't want to do a lot of stripes like this one. Um, so there's a good reference, I think, to start with. Uh, I also picked up um, another Osprey book. Uh, now, this is 172nd scale, so in this book you're going to see a lot more details, and they do a lot of the photo etched parts. We have metal pieces to make it super historically accurate. That, that ain't going to be me. I'm going to do my best. And sorry for flipping through here but uh, kind of taking some inspiration from here. Now, hopefully I don't run into those players that are like, well, that tank battalion wouldn't have had that paint scheme. I'm gonna do my best, I guess. Let me see if I can find the example. Like this one. There is a, um, a Tiger One tank uh, in uh, Late War Tiger One tank. Uh, and it's got the dark yellow scheme. It does have some very, very light brown stripes. But so it's not unprecedented. So I'm just going to take some inspiration from these. Uh, there's other stuff out there too. Uh, I also picked up some uh, decals from Warlord Games that they, sh you know, not too expensive. So they should have included uh, appropriate ones in their Hail Caesar uh, starter set. But that's a separate video if you want to go look at that. So I'm going to use those. And then, and I may be kind of psyching myself out here a little bit, but the analness that uh, some players you are some players demonstrate when they talk about historicals i have to say it has me on edge but i want to kind of head off any possible complaints and the other thing is you know and as much as people complain about games workshop to their credit they have an incredible range of paints and they do a good job whether it's white dwarf or other areas of like if you want this effect use this paint and for those of us that aren't artistically trained, or maybe I'm just not creative enough, I'm a little too literal, I like to follow directions, there isn't really that out there for historicals. Or you go to the Vallejo rack, and there's 50 different shades of gray, um, or dark yellow, or whatever. So what I decided to do was pick up, pick up these. And what it is, is you've got the layering up sets for, uh, there's the Dunkelgelb, uh, dark yellow paints, and then a weathering set for the yellow or gray vehicles. I do have pigments. I probably could have cobbled together these paints, although my uh, GW paints, Citadel paints, I don't have enough. So let's just take a look at one of these really quick. And uh, what this offers you, and it's just small batches of Vallejo paint but on the back, it just talks about like, and they're pretty simple instructions, it's not the best, but like just layering things up and then what you can do, and there's something similar, 
in this one. Uh, and so here you have the various colors for chipping and things like that. And then you've got some uh, pigment fixer and pigment. And then it talks about here. Yeah, and you can see that here's the dark gray paint that Dunkel Grau is talking about. Here's the dark yellow. And just talks about doing uh, chips and everything. Now, I've done that before, but I, I think I'm going to try to make this first one as simple as possible. So I'm going to play around with that. Uh, I also picked up some uh, MIG uh, Europe dry mud and Europe wet mud for the tracks and uh, some chipping medium that I had before for the vehicle to, um, to go through uh, and really kind of make this look as authentic as possible. It is 128 or 156 scale, 28 millimeter. So it's gonna be a little tough to get the detail that some of the other guys get in the 172nd or larger, but I'm gonna give it a shot. And so what I'm gonna do is at the, after I do this, I'm going to come back and let you know what I think about it, and then I'll go I'll put the decals on, and then I'll go to this, and uh, just kind of maybe stop a couple times in the process. Uh, I'm not sure I'm going to get this all done today, so I may have to chunk out this video, uh, but talk, give some people some reviews, and maybe use this as kind of an entry point for those of you trying to get used to painting historical armor in, a, in for bolt action. So uh, I will be back uh, in a few seconds for you after I've done the base coat and highlights on uh, the Mighty Tiger. So, take it easy, I'll see you in a sec. Hey there folks, okay, uh, it's just a couple seconds later and about three hours for me, just life gets in the way, but I got the base coat done and um, uh, a few of the, just a little bit of the camouflage. So, again, this is what I used, and I just get rid of the, the glare, so again, uh, Vallejo's uh, Dunkelgelb uh, German Dark Yellow. And uh, let's just, uh, I'll unpack in greater detail because this is going to be a mini review of that. So what you get are, are five paints and um, one uh, little thing of satin varnish. And these are pretty small. So they are about, so they are, how big is this? even say eight milliliters each so what you do is you start and you can see here all it basically does um let's just start this way is all you do is you work your way around and then you go to the varnish so it's basically just doing more and more highlights and the directions say give the whole tank a coat in their uh uh german dark yellow uh, and then you just work your way up. So then you go to a dark yellow in the recesses. That's kind of like your um, your undertone. And then you just slowly build your way up. And it's lighter and lighter and lighter. Um, until you're just barely giving a dusting on top of the vehicle. Uh, and then when you're done, you give it a, uh, a shot, shot, shot of the satin varnish. Just to seal it in. Which is good. That's fine. Um, let's take a look at the tank. I'm actually pretty pleased. Uh, so I did also do the camouflage. Uh, I initially wasn't going to, but most tanks that I could find in the, the area era, the time of the war that I wanted to show, um, did have camouflage. So on the Eastern front. And so you can see that the tank is, let's see here. Come on. Maybe. Okay, so it's not probably not going to show up too well, but you can see in the recesses, like this is the base color here. Uh, this is that primer color, and it builds up. And I didn't obviously want to make it too stark of a transition. Uh, so I think it looks good. The next step, and what I'm going to move on to is this. Uh, so this is the weathering set, uh, kind of the companion to that. Um, so, so far I'm pretty happy with the, how the tank is turning out. I added some camouflage. Um, so what I'm going to do now is do the details and the, the transfers, the decals. And I'm going to come back when I'm done with all the stuff that this includes. And this is the same thing. You've got the directions on the back. 
and everything, what they want you to do, both for uh, yellow and gray vehicles. Uh, so uh, happy with the progress so far, but maybe a, a quick little review of the uh, Vallejo uh, German Dark Yellow. So I, for some reason, I'm not seeing a price on this. Why am I not seeing a price on this? Maybe I took it off. I want to say that this was like $25, I think. So is, is it a good product? Yes. Uh, like I mentioned earlier in the video, for somebody that is a bit overwhelmed with all of the myriad color choices, um, I think that uh, this does a good job of giving you a kind of an, I won't say idiot proof, but if you're okay with an airbrush, and I'm no expert by any means, uh, kind of a decent looking uh, vehicle, uh, and, and, it, and it, it does what it says. It's not overwhelming in terms of directions, that's what you get but it's kind of idiot proof. The bottles are very small. I think a bottle of Vallejo is, what, six, five, six dollars? So if you wanted to get, you know, six of those, that's $30. Um, you're getting, uh, it's eight ounces, so you're getting about half, a little more than half of what a normal bottle of Vallejo paint would be. Um, but it is nice just to be able to go in and pick something up. So is it a huge cost savings? No. Is it kind of an idiot-proof way of airbrushing up at least the base coat layer of your tank? Yes. And for that reason, I'll give it a thumbs up. In the future, am I going to go buy more of them? No. Because now I know what colors I need and I can cheat. In fact, if people are interested and want the colors that they, they recommend, I am more than happy to post them um, or, or shoot you a note, let you know what it is. Uh, or I, maybe I'll just post them on the, the video I've made in my mind. So uh, we're on now to detail painting and, um, you know, we're going to do some weathering as well. So I think at this point I'm going to put this video out and then we'll do a part two for the rest of the build. So uh, thanks a lot for tuning in. Hope you guys have a great weekend and happy wargaming.